from London, England, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Q covering Discover 2015. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in London, England. This is SiliconANGLE, it's theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my host Dave Vellante, founder of Wikibon.com, and our next guest is Seamus Dunn. He is the Vice President of Hewlett Packard's Enterprise Technology Services and Support team of HP Enterprise, HPE. Welcome back to theCUBE in your first official new company role, which yep. was run as a split prior to the official date. How do you feel? Well, it's great. It's <laughs> actually kind of more focused. And uh, it's great to have an event like this kind of formalized, uh, the split, the focus. The feedback's great about the split. And um, yeah, it's great. Can't wait and to get And all the started. HP employees are doing a lot more huddling and training. I saw a roll out of the new brand. They're having all this kind of, people getting this, kind of get a feel for the new solutions focus, the transformation areas. A pretty good vibe here, very good vibe. Yeah, and, and it, uh, actually the, the engagement with customers at the event here in London, it's nice to be in a new place. The event is really running well in London. So a lot of excitement, a lot of engagement on the floor. I think it's like a refresh. It's, uh, you know, the company was good before, you know, it's just more focused now and there's yeah. a lot more engagement, more and the, buzz, and I think. The displays behind us are now in a new configuration and not in the org chart role, yeah. you know, storage group and then these little you know, sections. It's integrated by solutions. Which is great from a services point yeah, of view. You guys so have I'm always a technology led that, right? services <laughs> point of view, we've always said that, you know, we, we don't always have a new product to release when we're talking in service. We have a service arrangement. So we're all about relationship-based solutions. You know, we, we, we work with you all the time. We have your manager install base. So from a service point of view, talking about transformation areas and solutions is music to our ears. You know, that's, that's how we think of the business anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about the services. So you're supporting all the existing stuff and moving customers to the new promised land, the new cloud. You got the new style of IT, new style of business. And it's pretty cool, a lot of stuff we're seeing here. Yep. What's the hot products? I mean, obviously data center care is key. What are the big sellers right now, and what's the, where's the road to the future? From, from, from our technology services business, I know you had Scott Weller on before. What, we're, what we'll say is, we'll, we have a service called data center care that we will uh, give you one number to call, we'll have a team of experts on your site, and we'll help you get more out of the IT that you have on your premises today, before you do anything. We'll get more. You'll be one number to call, you'll have local experts, and then we'll help you evolve to the next. And evolve to the next is like, we'll prevent things from happening, so we keep you we'll give you stability, reliability, but then we'll move on, and we'll, we'll help you speed up innovation. We'll give you room and speed for innovation. So our catch is, we're not like a support and maintenance team so much as a customer success organization. There's one phrase yeah. that I'd use for what we're doing in technology services for HP Enterprise, it's we're helping, you, helping customers be successful. <coughs> How can you have successful outcomes yeah. from your business? You know? And you saw guys on stage yesterday says, I'm a, I'm a startup, you know, it's and and well, small, bigger startup than most startups, but they have a budget. And they're not really writing big fat checks to HP, but they want value, right? They want the value out of yeah. that. Um, so that's the future. Service-led infrastructure is certainly going to be a big part of the future, as certainly Wikibon analysts are all pointing to uh, as, as, as the future cloud native. Brian Gracie at Wikibon again, pointing to some of the trends there. Yeah. Um, so I got to ask you the really the, the, the customer success question about making sure nothing breaks to move to the next generation, is I want you to share with the audience some color around the split. Because that, um, you know, that was a very interesting experience that HP actually, HPE, and HP Inc., the former HP, yep. split into two and had to take this monolithic, historic, you know, 70 something years old company, split it in half operationally in mid, in mid flight yep. and have two systems in place. Well, as an uh, IT nightmare, potentially. Well, it's, it's a tough thing. So there's a few things. I, I re, I've worked in HP for a long time, so I remember we did this before. There was a company out there called Agilent, yep. which was a very successful That's company. measurement. Yeah, and, and I think when you have a company with a culture of HP, we want to make it work. People actually feel engaged working for this company, and they make things work and make things happen. It's collaborative. And you know, frankly, from a services point of view, it's part of why I work in services, even in HP. It's all about relationships and culture and management. People in our services division, 
do whatever it takes yeah. to help customers. And that's kind of the way we operate internally too. You know, it's, it's that's cultural. That's really it's cultural old thing. HP too. That's been a part of the DNA for a long time. Yeah, and I, I think you know, a split like this brings that out again. I still talk to my colleagues in HP Inc., you know, collaborate with them, and we'll continue to do that in front of customers where it's needed, but it was also time for focus. And so you can actually feel a little more focused in terms of enterprise level account engagement. You know, we just, it's doubling down on the focus. And our HP Inc. colleagues you know, are doubling down on some of the things they're doing with 3D printing and, and PCs and so on. So, you so know, it talk actually about the feels pretty seamless. Inside the weeds, well, there was a lot of services deployment to make new servers, split it up. That's a services and support role. So you had to support the old and bring in the new. Yeah. Well, I mean, what if happened? you think about it. Tell us. If you think about it, customers have infrastructure on their premises today. It's not like they're going to move everything to the cloud, but they're under pressure to innovate faster, to deploy applications faster, but they still have some old infrastructure. So we help with that. We'd help you get more out of that infrastructure that you have today, and we'd help you to evolve to the next. The way we'd phrase it is, we'd help you get more out of the infrastructure sitting on your premises today, and we do things like our operational support services, this is sort of outtasking for systems admins, uh, infrastructure automation, where we partnered with Chef, we have a genius bar in our R&D team that you can call. We'll help you get more out of, out of what you have today. But then, we'll make it, it'll get even better when you deploy new infrastructure, like our composable infrastructure synergy everybody's talking about today, or when you move towards a, a Helion OpenStack distribution. Or in fact, even if you want to go to the cloud, we'll partner with folks like Microsoft Azure, that's one of the things we're talking about here today, and help support you in that further deployment when you've moved off premise. So more out of what you have today, and make it even better as you evolve to the next. It's funny, you bring up the old HP, the DNA about support, and I know I worked there for nine years, I can tell you that support and service and support was really one of the, the mo customer satisfaction was the most important thing for HP. But you bring yeah. up also multi-vendor was a big thing for HP. Still is. You know, high quality products, but when they got into the computer industry as it got networked into the TCP IP generation, I call it, multi-vendor was a huge deal. Now with open source, that was like what TCP IP did for networking, now you have open source over here, multi-vendor's huge. Talk about this new dynamic, you're out of the cloud business, so Azure can partner there, yeah. you can buy more gear, billions of dollars worth of hardware, but you're now in partnering mode. Talk about the dynamic for the customer. So, so for, first of all, HP has always been a partnering company. That, as well as our internal culture, our ability to partner and work with other organizations is like, that's part of our DNA. Um, so multi-vendor, has been important to us all the time. At the end of the day, we're saying we support your data center, that's why we have this product data center care. And we support everything in your data center. And that has to mean infrastructure, hardware, that's not ours, we'll support that too. The software <coughs> stack, we'll support that too. And we've already had long-standing relationships with, with various OS and, and hypervisor uh, ISVs, and we're, div we're building out that ecosystem. Chef is a big one that we've announced, but She's Butterf back, butterfly. and a butterfly just came butterfly. back. That's, that's impressive. Sign. Wow. <laughs> Chasing butterflies. <laughs> hey, we're getting creative must be, in the There must be here. a symbol there, I don't know. <laughs> but it, supporting everything that you got in your data center, that's the idea of customer success. <laughs> you got a visitor. A, a butterfly the flying around. The is so popular, it's going into the <laughs> other realm of, yeah. of audience. So, sorry, you were, yeah, you no. were, you were I'll, I'll pick up from here. Go ahead. So, since I haven't said much lately. So, <laughs> Yeah, Dave, chime in. When we were talking to Scott, John and I, I had asked him about new metrics. I mean, this, this HP split and the new sort of solution areas uh, times with a new level of accountability within the customer base. And what Scott yeah. said was, it's no longer the project, you know, did you get this done, did you get that done, the list of stuff yeah. on time, on budget. It's more accountability around, did you meet the business outcomes that we established at the beginning of the initiative? And that can be anything. So that changes the way in which you get measured by your Hugely. customers. And so, yes. can you talk, let's peel the onion skin on that a little bit more than we were able to, because we didn't have much time with Scott. But. So, I mentioned data center care, which is our arrangement where we look after your, your, your whole IT infrastructure, your whole data center. And we, we, we launched that in 2012. Greater than 4,000 customers now. It's, 20% and growing exponentially as a portion of our whole business. Um, and 
the, the net promoter score and the customer stats are off the charts for that service, even compared with the rest of our services. Because it's so intimate, so relationship based, and it's so linked to where you're going, not just maintaining your, your infrastructure. And the clear thing that we've seen over the last number of years, when we're talking to not just the CIO, but the whole IT team, is they need stability and reliability, they want us to prevent issues, keep it up and running. They still want all of that, but now they want like speed, how can you help us deploy applications faster? How can you help me make the better quality of service that I deliver to my business? How can you help me with that? And that's, they, that feedback is actually what's driving a lot of our service innovation. That's why we went out and started partnering with Chef. That's why we started partnering with another, a, a number of ISVs around yeah. helping to automate your infrastructure, abstract away the complexity of your infrastructure. That's why we started partnering with uh, various ISVs to hide the seams between the complexity of, yeah. of the, the infrastructure that you have to manage. That's why we started working with Microsoft Azure to ha have a hybrid support model. That's why we build flexible capacity to give you cloud economics in your data center. The, all those drivers where it's not just stability and reliability of, of your infrastructure. Now it's helped me improve the quality of my service delivery to my business and how can I do that yeah. faster. With that, that is consistently the feedback we're getting. You know, you, you're in the front lines. I always love talking with you every time you come on theCUBE. Now for, it's been, what, since 2011 you've been on theCUBE. Because yeah. you get their action, because you have the intimate relationship. You have, you have the relationship and you're on the front line. So you, you're kind of a, the canary in the coal mine. Uh, the, absolutely. The, you're a trendsetter for us. So I got to ask you, based on your relationships you have with your customers, what are you hearing with respect to Composable, the Synergy thing, and IOT? Where are they in their mindset right now? Could you share some quick color on that? Well, you know, composable, the term composable resonates with, with everybody. And, and it's all linked to this idea of speed. What can I do to develop and deploy applications faster? Um, and, and to do that requires automation. And for you to be able to uh, configure infrastructure quickly and easily means you have to operate it as code. So the term infrastructure as code gets used. How can I automate everything so I can move faster? develop applications uh, faster, so the developers then don't have to go through a whole set of slow processing with the operations teams to get the applications deployed, that they can do it in runtime production. So the idea of composability <coughs> means you can abstract away the complexity of the infrastructure hardware and deploy applications faster. And frankly, what's happening as people move to the cloud, the public cloud, is uh, there's still kind of questions about you know, how fast, how much, and what can I do on premise? But the on premise experience is being driven by what you can do off premise. Yeah, yeah. So they need speed, they need to abstract the, the Real infrastructure. Real quick, IoT. Are they feeling that too, customers? Or you know, not so much? The internet of, the internet of things is, I mean, it's everybody a dream. talks about it. I mean, it's a big vision, I mean, every, connecting everything. Yeah. Which is, I think, relevant, relevant, but a little bit hyped up now. Yeah, I mean. But there's it, some low hanging fruit. There must be something. Well, you know, so. Uh, Personally, I think of the Internet of Things within the data center and leveraging it so I can improve and become predictive analytics. In terms of how it can help your business, um, you know, we, we tend to talk to the IT team to you know, deploy yeah. new applications that helps them advance the Internet yeah. of Things for their business, but you know, frankly, as, as, as a service organization, I, you know, I, I really yeah. don't I mean, we're seeing that. the phase one is clearly connect what you can. Plant, yeah. manufacturing, retail, already connected devices on the network. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and, and that, 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 that's Not go out and try to be the windmill, chasing butterflies. Chasing butterflies, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the IOT theme. Yeah. Look at this, is, this is the IOT butterfly. Yeah. Uh, Seamus, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Your charm is attracting the butterflies. The butterflies. <laughs> Look at that, this is theCUBE here. I hope Great that's a to good have symbol. you on. And again, you're, you're a, uh, the soothsayer for, our, for the Cube here. You get to predict the future. You're out in the front lines and you've got those relationships. It's really important. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thank you, John. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate it. This is theCUBE. We'll be back with more after this short break.